Greetings viewers and happy holidays. My name is Tyler Cloud and this is my collection crib. For the past 10 years I have collected mostly video games and action figures and my plan is to review some of the coolest pieces of my collection to you, the viewers. And since Christmas is right around the corner, I figured it would be a good opportunity for me to review a Christmas video game. So grab yourself a Sega Saturn and your traditional eggnog for the season, because today we're going to be talking about Christmas Nights into Dreams. But first, we must cover our quick history lesson. Yeah, the first Nights in the Dreams game came out in mid-1996 for the Sega Saturn. It was created by the Sonic creator's Sonic Team. And our main character is Knights, who is a jester who spins, tackles enemies, and flies around amazing 32-bit landscapes to help spare the nightmares from the two kids named Claris and Elliot. While Sega was trying their hardest to finish the first 3D Sonic game called Sonic Extreme, it seemed that Knights was filling the void for Sonic, and by late 1996, Knights was the biggest thing going for the Saturn. There's never been a game like Sega Saturn's Knights. Never been a game that's allowed you to fly, fluid and free, in real time 3D. Never, not anywhere. Someday when I do an official Sega Saturn review, I'll talk about nights. But since we're only going to talk about Christmas nights, I want to take you back really quickly to explain why it's taken me so long to review this game. Let me take you back to 2010. I bought Christmas Nights in the Dreams in mid-December and I started it up, I selected Elliot, everything's going good, and then... BOOM! The game froze. I don't know what happened, I took the game out, and look, a giant crack was on it. It was right on the back of the disc, and to this day, I have no idea how it happened. When it came in the mail, it didn't look like this, and my Saturn hasn't done anything before or after this. Good thing I got my money back, and my interest in finding another $50 Christmas Nights pretty much faded away. But fast forward seven years later, and a lot of things have changed with my Saturn. Just recently, I found a different version of Christmas Nights, and it was only 12 bucks. And it was in a jewel case of all things, while the other one came in a paper sleeve. But, being the idiot that I was, while reading the manual, I realized... I picked up the Japanese version. It means I won't be able to play it on my American Sega Saturn. So, I'm pretty much screwed, right? And wrong! You cannot play Japanese games on your America Sega Saturn. Unless, you have this. This is the Action Replay 4 Mylas Sega Saturn Memory Pack. I got it at a Comic Con of all places for 20 bucks. Now I figured this was just a memory card, but to my surprise, there was a lot more that you can do with this. First of all, it has a Game Shark, which gives you of course numerous cheats to Sega Saturn titles. Secondly, it has its memory storage of course, and it shows the data on the console's battery. Yes. The battery. These stupid little watch batteries that only last you a year, and if you take them out beforehand, you'll lose all your data. So either way, you're screwed with these little things. But, thankfully, here you can move your games from the battery onto the memory card, so that before it dies, you'll have everything stored in the card. But what I really think is the most unique thing about this memory card is that it will give you the ability to play Japanese Sega Saturn titles. As long as you have the memory card in your Sega Saturn, Almost every Japanese game that was released can be yours to play. So now that I have everything that I need, let's get on with the Japanese version of Christmas Nights into Dreams for the Sega Saturn. Christmas Nights only has one level from the original game, with both kids sharing their respected turns. The graphics and soundtrack were changed from Daytime in the Meadows to the Snowy Christmas Night. In the game, the town's Christmas tree is missing its star, and the kids have to summon a certain somebody to help get it back. The game is fun and beautiful to look at for its time, and it still is. 
For five stages, you're collecting these giant balls called ideas from these capsules that look like Christmas trees. Each stage, you need to get as many points as possible, either from flying through the rings, attacking enemies, and destroying the capsules on a time limit, in order to get a grading of C or higher so that you can progress through the level. After collecting five of the balls, you'll find out that one of the bosses from the original game named Gilding stole the town's Christmas tree star. Whenever you attack him, his head comes off, and it keeps respawning until he's at the tip of his tail. Once you beat him and get the official grade of C or higher, you will be treated to the present screen. It's a mix and match game where every face represents different prizes. For instance, this is one of the Knights Museums. It shows different pictures of Knights and all the other characters, including the bosses. But my favorite really has to be the Knights Goods. It shows multiple items of Knights into Dreams merchandise like beds, clocks, hats, dolls. It's really cool. I mean, this is a great example of just how much Sega was trying to push Knights to be even bigger than Sonic. Maybe even Mario. But speaking of Sonic, there's one prize that if you activate, you will get a bonus level. Or should I say a bonus demo within a demo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is technically the first 3D Sonic level. See, remember the Sonic Extreme game? Well, within months, the game would be cancelled due to its extreme programming difficulty. And creative behind it called it a nightmare. Before the cancellation, they put Sonic in the Christmas Nights in the Dreams level in order to give fans final hope that Sonic Extreme was coming soon. And by doing this, the demo beats out Sonic Adventure as becoming the first 3D Sonic game. It's interesting, yes until you play the damn level. Sonic takes over Knights' role in the Christmas level, but he runs so slow and he jumps way too high. What are you trying to be, Mario? At least give me the lightspeed dash or something. I mean, really, this is a mess. But anyway, Sonic does the same objectives as Knights would. Collect the five balls, destroy the capsules, and get a C or higher. And then after that, the final boss is Dr. Robotnik himself. But as a balloon clown. Here, it's much easier to control Sonic, where you have to grab Robotnik and aim him in the direction of the wooden fences. Then you fire him off to break through the next room. You keep doing this until he is at the wall where three spikes are waiting to pop him. And after you've beat him, that's pretty much it. And all I have to say is, it's a shame that this wasn't an official multi-level night sequel, because this demo was a lot of fun. And as for a Japanese game, there's really not much Japanese text or language in the game, with the exception of the game's narrator. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do my best to find subtitles for the next Japanese games I review. And while trying to get all the prizes and finding all the Easter eggs is fun and challenging and all, playing through the one level can be pretty tiring at times. So my official Collection Crib rating for Christmas Nights Into Dreams is a B-. The gameplay is great, you know, despite the one level, and the prizes do keep you coming back for more. And the Sonic level, while it is weird, <laughs> it is pretty amusing. There was definitely passion put into this project. Unfortunately, this would be Knights of Swan Song for the Sega Saturn. Well, everybody, that's going to do it for my first episode of Collection Crib. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. And right now, I got some eggnog chugging to do. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you next time. メリークリスマス。